That is a somewhat reasonable thought process, but it is still wrong. So this is the part where I get to dismantle this dumbass argument using science. What's going on YouTube? Certified personal trainer, full gains, back with another video. Welcome back to the channel. If you're new, then welcome. Today, I want to ask you, have you ever heard anybody say that high reps and low weight tones the muscle? Me personally, I have heard this over and over as a personal trainer, and it just grinds my gears because it is just plain false. So allow me to prove to you that toning the muscle is not even a concept in sports science. Now, before I talk about the studies, let me outline where people get confused. So when somebody says that they want to tone the muscle, they generally are referring to one of two ideas. Number one, they think that high reps and low weight will somehow give their muscle more definition without building more muscle. Or number two, they understand that muscular definition only really comes from losing body fat and water weight, but they still think that high reps and low weight burns more calories. When it comes to that first idea of muscle toning, this is just a myth overall. When I have clients that ask me about how to tone the muscle, I always tell them that there's one type of muscle growth and that is called hypertrophy. Now, funny enough, that statement in and of itself is actually false, but the people I usually tell this to are just middle-aged women asking about muscle toning. In actuality, there are technically three types of muscular hypertrophy. I promise we will circle back to that second idea of muscle toning, but first I just have to explain the three types of hypertrophy. For starters, there is what's called transient hypertrophy, which is technically just the pump, so we aren't worried about that since you kind of just atrophy after your workout anyways. The second type of hypertrophy is called myofibrillar hypertrophy. I hope I'm saying that right. And this is the type of hypertrophy that occurs in athletes and powerlifters. With myofibrillar hypertrophy, the muscle actually becomes stronger and denser and is the result of lower rep ranges, heavier weight, and longer rest periods. In essence, this is what people want when they talk about a toned muscle, but ironically, they end up training for the third and final type of muscle growth, which is called sarcoplasmic hypertrophy. So sarcoplasmic hypertrophy is actually the type of muscle growth that makes you big and bulky. And guess what causes sarcoplasmic hypertrophy? That's right. High reps and low weight. It's worth noting that other factors of sarcoplasmic hypertrophy include shorter rest times and higher training volume as well. So basically, all of you muscle toning monkeys out there are just shooting yourselves in the foot by doing high reps and low weight in an attempt to tone the muscle. But wait, there's more. But wait, there's more! Think back to what I said about the other idea of muscle toning. Or number two, they understand that muscular definition only really comes from losing body fat and water weight, but they still think that high reps and low weight burns more calories. That is a somewhat reasonable thought process, but it is still wrong. So this is the part where I get to dismantle this dumbass argument using science. <laughs> Higher reps with lower weight does not burn the most amount of calories. In fact, the opposite is true. Lower reps with higher weight burns more calories. And I have three studies to back this up. Excuse me if I mispronounce any of these, but our first study is Old and Abernathy, 1993, which compares sets of 60% and 75% of a one rep max. As for reps, the group using higher weight did lower reps and vice versa, so the group using lower weight did higher reps. The study measured oxygen use and energy expenditure, aka calories burned, during the set, but found no differences between the two groups. Our second study, Hunter et al., 2003, was conducted with men and women and measured 45%, 60%, and 70% of one rep maxes, again, 
the higher the weight, the lower the reps. What they measured in this study is called EPOC, or Excess Post-Exercise Oxygen Consumption, which is basically the amount of calories burned after the workout, also known as the afterburn. Surprisingly, they found that the calories burned post-workout significantly increased with intensity during the workout. Finally, our last study backs up the other two. So Thornton and Pottiger, I hope I'm saying that right, 2002 had women perform 45% and 85% of their eight rep max in resistance training. I shouldn't need to say it again, but the higher the weight, the lower the reps and vice versa. This study measured both calories burned during the workout and after the workout. Oxygen use and calories burned during the workout were again very similar, but again, calories burned post-workout, the afterburn, were much higher for the high intensity group. In conclusion, boys and girls, higher weight and lower reps burns more calories. Boom, in your face, Jacob. Sorry, I had a disagreement with this guy named Jacob. Anyways, toning isn't a real thing, but the closest we can get to toning is high weight and low reps. Combining the facts that higher weight and lower reps builds more dense muscles rather than big bulky muscles, and it burns more calories, I'd say that maybe toning is a real thing. Psych, that's all I've got for you guys today. If you liked the video, then leave a like and subscribe. If you didn't like the video, smash that dislike button and write me a paragraph about how I have no facial hair. But either way, I appreciate you watching, and I'll catch y'all in the next video. Peace.